Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Old School with you here, and it's time for some more Disney Infinity. And once again, we are under construction. This is a special video. I'm going to actually show you how I made my special time challenge toy box. That was part of our creator's challenge. That's between myself, Papa H, Professor Toy Box, and 72 Pringle. You can go to Discord and vote for the toy box that you like the best. But here's how I made mine. I knew I was going to go with a Star Wars... Death Star theme and the time challenge is going to be to turn off the tractor beam so I'm gonna be using Obi-Wan as the player or the character that I play through this with. Now as with just about all of my Death Star builds I like to start out with the hangar bay which in this case is gonna start the whole thing off. We're gonna actually do a cut scene to start things off of the Millennium Falcon being pulled in with the tractor beam. So for that we're going to need a big bay door entrance and for that, I was kind of inspired by Papa H's Death Star interior that he had as part of the Rise of the Resistance. Which I guess technically means it wasn't a Death Star, but I still like the entrance to the bay anyway because he had a white stripe going down the middle. And I thought that made it pop a little bit nicer, so I'm going to go with that same idea right here. So we're going to go with the traditional triangular blocks as I've done in the past. And the difference is, on the two outer ones, they will be Death Star Black. And on the interior one, we're going to go with the white. And it gives it a different look, and I thought it was a much better overall appearance. And just something different. I didn't want it to be the same as every other build that I've made of a Death Star. And this one will make it look a little bit more unique. Thank you. 
Now here you can see I've put down the landing platform and I'm going to use that not as what it is, but I'm going to use it as part of the interior that takes you up to the tractor beam to be shot off. Which means we're going to be covering it up in many ways where you won't see the full effect of the landing platform as it is currently. Now we're going to have to negotiate some of these blocks very carefully because there's obviously going to be some collision. But I've placed it at a distance where I can work around it. And as you'll see shortly, I can work above it. So as I said earlier, this is not going to look like a landing platform because that's not what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to take some Death Star tiles and I'm going to cover the floor so that you don't even realize that's what you're standing on. I have to be careful not to cover the entrance, of course, because that's where we're going to come up to this level. Now my original plan was to have a lot of path creators going through here at each level that would have stormtroopers walking along them along with a dynamic trigger attached to them and that if you got within a certain range of the stormtrooper they would engage you. However, after multiple attempts the logic really just didn't cooperate with that plan. For a number of different reasons, I'd be engaging stormtroopers on the lower level and the ones on this level would jump through the floor to get involved, even though they were set not to acknowledge me. It didn't seem to matter, they would do it anyway. So instead what I found worked better was just to have enemies come out and attack you as you enter each level, and that would take a little bit of time off the clock, preventing you from getting to the tractor beam and turning it off. So that was the more effective way of getting it done in this game.
Now one of the other things that I needed to make sure of is that once you get out of the hangar bay and start heading in to the Death Star, I wanted the Sky Dome to change and brighten up just a little bit more because otherwise it would be way too dark and it wouldn't look right. So we're going to set up our Sky Changer right here and that's going to take effect once you go through the Blast Door. Now the Blast Door is not in yet but that's going to be coming up in just a few moments. So stick around for that. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're building the cavern that the tractor beam sits on top of. So as you remember, there's a long fall if you're not careful while you're up there. And Obi-Wan was turning that thing off at a pretty perilous height. So I wanted to replicate that, and that is exactly what we've done with the landing bay area. Now the other thing I need to do in order to get up to the tractor beam area is I have to create here on the second level a tunnel to an elevator and that elevator will take you up to the tractor beam. So what I'm doing right now is creating the passageway to the elevator. The elevator will be at the end of this hallway. And for this, I think I'm going to end up using on the floor one of the racetrack pieces, which has the Death Star orange effect to it, once we've blocked everything else out. 
And we're also going to go back shortly and we're going to stagger the triangular blocks a little bit more so that they are back and forth between the Death Star theme with the white lighting and just the solid black. And I think that'll give it a much better effect. Here we've got the track going down. Now we're going to add the Imperial Battle Station track effect to it. And now while you're on the floor walking through, once we've finished putting up the sides, uh, all you'll see is a couple of strips of the orange, but I think that's going to give it a really nice pop. I was thinking about using the white ones, but I just wanted the orange because there's nowhere else that I have the orange tiles in this game. And I really felt that that would be missing if I didn't use it at all in the entire build. Okay, so now we have the tunnel that's going to take us to the elevator. And then the elevator, of course, is going to take us up to the tractor beam. What I'm going to do now is just put some highlight colors around the entrance and then down the tunnel itself so that it's not just one straight black pattern all the way. So that was the fall from the top of the elevator shaft, or where the elevator shaft is going to be eventually. And that, of course, is going to be the chasm on which the tractor beam sits atop. We'll end up putting a destruction trigger box in here so that if any of the AI or if you fall in, you will be derezzed. All right, now that we have the tunnel done, we're going to do the interior of this room. You'll be able to go either way. Now, my original game plan here was to have some stormtroopers on pads, but it wasn't cooperating at all. And the idea would be that if you got too close to one of the stormtroopers, of course, it would bring in reinforcements. And I had these little notches along the pathway that you could hide behind a column and then they would walk by and not see you as long as you got there in time. 
But again, the path creator has been real tricky on this. I think it's partly because it's multiple levels. But path creators are always a little finicky. And in this case, they were proven to be a lot more trouble than they were worth. So at the end of the day, this is more about aesthetics. It doesn't really affect gameplay so much. Because we're just going to launch the enemies in automatically to make you struggle to beat the clock. Okay, now we're putting in the path creators that are going to make the elevator go up and down. For the purposes of the time challenge, you're really only going to take it upwards, but I decided to leave it with an option of going back down. If after the game you want to explore, you can do that. So basically the elevator will go up, it'll stop at that point in time, the path will go dead, but it'll also connect to the next path over. And to turn that on, we'll put a separate button, and that'll send you back down. Pretty simple logic, and this one actually works. And that's going to be the button that will bring you back down and reactivate the elevator. And then, of course, we'll need one down here at the bottom to send you on your way up to the tractor beam. got to make sure in the beginning that both pads are off. That should be their default, is that they're in the off position, and only the buttons will turn them on. The other thing you want to make sure you do is that when your object reaches the end of each path, it turns the path back off again. If you don't do that, it's just going to keep on looping up and down. Now, when I'm looking for the floor piece for the elevator, the regular large floor is not quite large enough for this. 
so instead we're going to switch that out for one of the special archway blocks instead because that will take over the entire floor Okay, so this is going to be the button that launches the elevator up towards the tractor beam. I was originally going to put it here on the back wall, but then I'm thinking some errant fire during the stormtrooper encounter could trigger that off. So I think maybe better it'll be to be placing it on the sidewall where that's a less likely event to have happen. So we're just going to move it eventually here from the back wall where it is to the left side and that's really just to prevent it from being accidentally struck during battle. Right now I'm just trying to get the floor to sit flush. I was hoping to have the Death Star tile visible, but if I do that there's always going to be a lip and I really didn't want that either. So we're going to sink it flush, but we're not going to see it until it goes up. So small consolation. Now, of course, we're going to have to put walls around this thing and create a true tunnel effect. Oop, and we forgot to set it to go one way and stop, so we'll have to make that adjustment as well. Okay, we have the elevator shaft almost complete right now. After I run through it a couple of times to make sure everything's working properly, then I'll put a little extra decor on the inside just so that it makes it have a cooler effect as you're moving. I'm going to add some superficial stuff here in the bottom section where we first enter the climb to the tractor beam. This is not an area that we're actually going to be doing anything in. 
But as Walt Disney once said, it's all in the details. If you've ever been to the Hall of Presidents over at Disney World, one of the things I found really interesting is that Teddy Roosevelt, who was the president that was in the wheelchair, he had had uh, suffered polio. And in his real life, he had to walk with these metal braces on under his pants. Well, even though you don't see them under the pants, in the Hall of Presidents, they still put the braces on. And again, it's all about the details. Now we're just going to put the base floor that's going to surround our chasm and lead us to the tractor beam that we will turn off. Okay, now we need to come up with a bridge that will get you over to the tractor beam. And while I'm starting out with these floor panels, I'll use that as the base for the tractor beam, but I'm not going to use that as the bridge. I want that to be a little more challenging. So we're going to end up going with some rail slides. And then the final product, I'm also going to have the tractor beam going down the shaft as well.
All right, one of the last things we'll be showing here is the blast door that takes you from the landing bay into the first climb up. And due to the size of the blast door, it's going to take two large panels to complete. So that means we're going to put two different path creators on each side, one to bring the doors down and one to bring them back up. And it's going to work with the same logic as the elevator did. When it comes down, it'll switch over towards the other path, and then it'll head back up and stop. In this situation, though, we don't need a button that's going to send it each direction. It will automatically be in motion, and it will only stop when it reaches the return position. And instead of a button, we're going to put a trigger area by the door so that when you enter the doorway, it automatically goes down, which is pretty much the way it happens in the movies. After putting a steel finish on the wood to give it that look, the next thing we want to do is take the trigger area and place it inside the door entryway area and that's going to set the blast doors going in the down motion. There will be about a one to two second delay before it starts coming up only because of the distance on the paths that it's traveling which is why I have them going deeper below the surface is I want to leave the doors down long enough for the players to get through. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, the door's now working, and the last thing is really just to do some finishing touches, putting up some of the Death Star, Death Star panels to make it look a little nicer, and also give it that depth effect that they had in the scene. And that's pretty much it. On one of my next streams, I will play the game live, and then I can really dissect it more going into spark mode and show you guys all the little nuances of what went into this in case there's some part of it that wasn't covered in this shorter video. Thanks for checking things out. We appreciate you guys checking out our little event yesterday, and we'll see you right back here when we're under construction.